anyone cut me short I was thinking this was the way to go And you put up your puppet show I say cheers to life No, I'll be no good man Just leave me alone What I do remember that it was real, real life Talks about me are never good I don't live like the way that I should, oh well I'm in for some fun tonight Just leave me alone Everybody, it is Wednesday night, middle of the week, and I'm excited because I get to sit down with a good friend of mine. Uh, John is in house, panda time, everybody. One of the uh, one of the people I put on kind of our Mount Rushmore of those who started out this whole Disney social media front. John's been there from the get go. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the history of social media with Disney. We're going to talk about his current current situation. Got some good stuff going on over on the Big Fat Panda channel and all his social media fronts. Talk about where it's going. Uh, what you're going to see coming from Panda, and uh, a lot of exciting stuff. So let's get this opening done, knocked out, and killed. Let's talk about Dean in the Live Place. Does a great job supporting so many other people, over 150 family-friendly channels over there. Love the Live Place, love Dean, love everything he does. Check out the Live Place. Proud to partner with so many great people. These are seven of my partners going live from the parks and from home, killing each week. We got Chaotic Crusaders. You'll hear about them throughout my shows. Start out talking with Dan with Disney Worlders, 21,000 strong on his Facebook group over there. We appreciate Dan and all he does. And our executive producers, I've got them from all over the world, California, Florida, and over in Paris, France, covered. That's why we've got the content there. All of our executive producers, all of our partners, all of our crusaders, links directly to them right on the front of my YouTube page. Go over to them. We're working hard over on Facebook. We've got a group. we got a page keeping things relevant. We're TikToking and Instagramming. Doing everything we can to stay right up front in that social media aspect. And, of course, the Discord with over 250 family-friendly people over there talking Disney, talking Star Wars, talking Marvel, sports, and more. It's absolutely fantastic. We do have membership on the channel for anybody who might be interested in it. Four different tiers of membership. We do one of the higher-level tiers. We will get you out one of the Disney-minted coins that we do. So proud of the coins that we have. Created Ajana Claire, Zoelle's World, and her amazing travel company help to support us all the time. Wise Travel is an upscale travel design and consulting firm specializing in curating ultra luxurious travel destinations designed specially for business professionals. Focusing to deliver the once in a lifetime experience that will create lasting memories. Encompassing adventures in Europe or the Americas, luxurious river cruises, relaxing beach getaways, or detailed trips to Disney locations worldwide, a Jean Claire Wise Travel personalizes the experience. What rich and exciting moments do you want to create for yourself this year? We'll start writing your story with a Jean Claire Wise Travel today. A 
Disney destination guide is your location for fun and relaxation. <laughs> this destination guide is informative information with advice on planning and having the best Disney trip ever. Programming providing you fun, helpful checklists, templates, and PDFs for tips to planning your trip, fun activities, recipes, and so much more. A place to escape for a moment in your busy, hectic day and have a quick Disney theme fun games, trivia, ride videos, fun facts, and so much more. Disney Destination Guide. It's your place to go. Hey, we got a P.O. Box. If you guys would like to send any mail into us, Preston and I love opening up mail on our Friday night show coming up this week. Friday night, we'll be opening up a ton of mail that we've got to share with everybody. We're excited. Sunday night, it's back. It's a Clubhouse chaotic chat. We'll talk a little bit more about this a little bit later on in the show, but the ladies are killing it. It's Sunday night, 6 o'clock, one of the best new all-ladies format as they do all of the interviews. It's pretty awesome. And Park Hopper Choppers, everybody. I can't say enough about these guys. I hashtag, I am a a patron. This is not a sponsor. I just love these guys. They took care of me when I was down there. They're a brand new company out there serving the Florida area with some of the best service out there. Quality second to none. Pricing competitive to Disney. You're going to kill it with Park Hopper Choppers. Hashtag good people, good friends, and we're excited about them. So, hey, it's that time. It's Wednesday night. It's time for our guest. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know this person, well, I'm glad you're here tonight because you're going to meet somebody who is Disney knowledgeable, who is Disney educated, who is Disney all the way around his life, knows more about the parks and probably forgot more than I ever know. Coming in again, joining us, our good friend, it's Amanda. Hey, John, how you doing, buddy? How you doing, buddy? I, I I could start talking to you in Italian, but half the people would get mad right now. So I would, I would only know the bad words. Oh, well, then, I, then you definitely don't want me talking to you in Italian. I, I had one grandmother from Southern Italy and one from Northern, and because they spoke different dialects, they would teach me. And when I went to go try on my new material, to other, one to the other, they didn't understand, yeah, the, so I abandoned that. The dialect will kill you. I once tried to say, pass the eggplant, and I said, pass something else, and it did not go over well. So let me just <laughs> let me just tell you, it's it gets a little they, crazy there. So. Did they drive you to the church? Sometimes uh, when I'd curse, oh, they no, would I tell you, you're gonna, go, you're gonna go tell the priest what you just said to me. Get in the car. No, I didn't get that one. I got the backhand right to the thing. It was pretty good. So miss my grandmother. She was good people. Uh, everybody's in here. Tina Marie, Debbie Bernfeld, Joe. I know everybody's here. Molly, Dan coming in. Jill. Okay, so monorail Molly. Let's just put it out there, Pete. We're uh -huh. taking her to dinner. Because okay. I don't know this lady, but she sees me every Tuesday, and I got to know who she is. Okay. Well, we will we will definitely get that lined up. We will definitely get that lined up. We're excited about that. So uh, let's, yeah, me too. You and I have known each other for for quite a bit. Uh, I got the pleasure of meeting you back when I first started with Resort TV One years and years ago in the park. Uh, got to know you a little bit further after that. It was kind of exciting. So I, you've had such a long run. Why don't you just for a minute just share with everybody kind of how you fell into all of this. And oh, how gosh. This, all how, right. All right. You know, New York guy, you know, uh, you know, salt of the earth from, you know, the, the I guess the the part Long of the island, the, the Long Island area that, you know, Mitchell Air Force Base type of thing, you know, <laughs> found your way down to Florida. So well, first, before I get off on that, you keep telling everybody how wonderful they are. And I have to tell how wonderful you are wow. so much. In fact, that when I first met you, my antenna went up. I was like. There's not a lot of nice people that are genuinely nice. And I thought, oh, this Pete guy, he's he got some angle. And then I was hearing from everybody, no, he's genuine. And I learned it myself. No, he is who he says he is. And he's a great guy. So thank you for being that person because it's uh, it's refreshing. Thank you, buddy. And uh, yeah, I was in, you know, I was, the, the I don't want to repeat things that people might know. And a lot, I know a lot of people don't, so I'm going to say it. But I was probably like a, a kid, you know, in Long Island. We didn't have mm -hmm. a lot of money. Right. We didn't travel a lot, so it was just my house and Disney on the TV. My father was good with showing me the Muppets, with showing me Disney. He made sure that we watched those things, and it was right. event TV, sitting down with Dad. You know, he's still alive today. God bless him. He's like 86 today, and he's uh, he's good. Uh, so that was the thing. And then he tells me at like six years old, we're going to Disney World. I had I We were only at the zoo. That's I've never been on a plane, okay. never went anywhere. Some somehow he saved up some money. He was a bricklayer, and then he became a uh, what did he do? A building inspector. Okay. 
Okay. So it was a moderate income with uh, right. three kids, but we knew we were going to Disney World. I remember landing. And I do remember seeing palm trees and thinking, this is different. And I quickly remember the Seven Seas Lagoon and that ferry boat. And I know that it hits people and, you know, impacts them, obviously. Right. But I think it impacted me a little more because I looked at my father at that age and said, I'm going to move here. Wow. And he, and he left. I remember he left and he said, don't worry, you'll probably grow out of it. Mm-hmm. Never happened. So how old so were when you? I when got, I'm sorry, sir. How old were you when you moved there? Oh, like 34. It was a okay. long time. Took a little bit. Okay. Well, yeah, you're better than Took me. I'm still little... trying to get there. <laughs> well, you're kind of here. In spirit, you're here. <laughs> but yeah, it was it wasn't easy to to you know to figure it out. But I and I remember just I talked about it forever. Like when I got home five years later, I would still talk to you about the haunted mansion. I couldn't shut up about it. It just it was in my DNA, my blood. The right. the, the thing that got me too was remember when you're on the ferry boat and you see the kingdom across the way right. and the monorails going in the castle. I remember thinking that's just, that's amazing. It's that's money. So even now when I see it, I still. It, it still takes you back as you, you know, as you're going over there. I mean, Walt obviously wanted that anticipation, you know, of the build up to get to each of the parks. And, and he had his touch on that. And I, I tell you what, there's, there's no better feeling than three things. One, getting on that ferry boat, just like you said, seeing it across the way is one. Uh, we had a 1999 super chat there too. I want to highlight real quick, John. I don't want to leave anybody. Aww. That was very nice of somebody to do that. Jeff Condon, thanks for being here. Thank you, Jeff, for being here. Jeff, a huge supporter. You know that name? To our community. Yeah, he's a good man. Good man. A huge supporter to our community, uh, and serves his serves uh, his community as a firefighter. So God bless him uh, for doing that. Absolutely. The anticipation of going over and coming across the boat. The anticipation of the monorail coming around and bringing you in you know, as you're coming in, the, the anticipation of coming in your vehicles or walking over is just unreal. And that feeling just can't be replaced. Yeah, when people complain about, oh, you have to travel so hard to get into the Magic Kingdom, I, I want to tell them, you're like, that was purposeful. You're supposed to feel like you escaped. <clears throat> Excuse me. So even when Disney plays like popular music in the park, I want to really go and find the DJ and just like, <laughs> because... You know, it shouldn't be. You should not hear Madonna in the in the Disney theme park. You should be hearing some sort of fantasy music because they've removed you from reality. Right. But I get it. But yeah, John, I, those, I still uh, appreciate John, it. Love to you uh, there, John, on the thing. Uh, the Adventures of Mr. Gonzo saying, yes, we know who you're. Hey, oh, Gonzo. I love Gonzo. Yeah. I catch him in the park and play around with him. He's a good man. He's a, he's a Disney. Em, em, the empanadilla. Yes. There's an empanada. There's a quesadilla. And there's an empanadilla, apparently. Apparently. Uh, and, and I just say, uh, yeah, let's just go to Mexico, Gonzo. That's, we'll just make it happy. I love Gonzo. He's a good man. Good man. You know, John, yes. as you sit here and think about this Disney aspect, did you see it in the foresight as you came down and started to be part of this community and said, okay, I'm going to build this social media that I'm going to do? You started out and you rolled with it. Did you see the friendships? Did you anticipate that? There was you- no plan at all. No. No, I remember making the first video. And I remember I did commercials back in New York where I was like, you know, a scared little kid that went to Manhattan from Long Island, which is a big difference. Big bump. Like, big bump. And I, big bump. And I remember auditioning and then running right back to Long Island, like touching safe space. Right. And, uh, you know, so I always had this personality where I wanted to do TV shows and stuff like that. And, you know, stuff happened, stuff didn't happen. But I had a few TV commercials like the Trapper Cooper Notebook, which right. I share out sometimes on my Facebook mm-hmm. page. So I had that, but I didn't, I didn't plan it. I, I think I did an Epcot video, which was for flower and garden. Okay. And I just put it up on a YouTube channel. I don't even know if I named the channel at the time. And I loved the way people took to it. And it was almost an extension of entertainment. Meaning even though it wasn't my face on the camera, I felt like through the camera, I could tell a story. Mm-hmm. Here's where I arrived. You know, here's the big establishing shot. Here's the close up of detail, something. So that kind of took and when I saw the way it was received, I was like, oh, that's fun. Still, never thought you could make a dollar from it. Never thought it would become a big thing. Never thought I'd make money from YouTube because at the time you needed a thousand subscribers and that was a joke. Right. You know, I had three. So, yeah, <laughs> there was no plan until it, it just evolved. And I was like, okay, this is fun. And it's got to be one of the blessings because, you know, you and I have a lot of, of friends that are, are, are cross paths across it, you know. And, you know, I see you out there 
uh, you know, with these friendships that you've established. And, and I see it on my end here with some of the people that I've met and built relationships with. It is the best thing to me that's come out of it is the people and the relationships. A hundred percent. Yeah. You're never alone. Never. You could go to the park and call somebody up and have a great time because you have that camaraderie right. you know, in common that we all, we all love this thing. Let's go experience it the way we want to together. And it's a lot of fun. I love always telling the story of, um, you know, I mean, cause you and I had met, we, we, we met, we never really, you know, interacted, but it was uh, when I was with Dev down there in the poly that one day yep. that uh, I when, don't remember that day. I remember the second time we met. But you remember this one with Dev. I remember the first. Yeah, the first time. Cause you, I don't remember so it. We were, me, Dev and I were over at the Poly, and we were sitting upstairs because I had to catch my plane, and I was waiting for – I had like another 45 minutes to go to the airport, right? And we didn't feel like going anywhere, and Dev's just like, let's just sit here, and we'll just you know BS and everything. And then he goes – I was sitting with my back to the, to the doors, and he goes, hey, Panda's coming in the door. And I said, no way. I said, I haven't seen John in forever. And, uh, and he goes, let's go over and talk to him. Well – Right as you came in, you had this mob of people that came over to you. It was like eight people that came over to you, and you were being so genuine and so nice. And uh, and Dev and I walked over right as we were about walking out the door. And the, the cool thing was you, you remembered me because you said, hey, to Dev. You shook his hand, and Dev went to say, hey, this is, and you go, oh, you're Pete. And I was like, yeah, and I shook your hand, and that was it. And I just told Dev, let's go, because, you, you know, at that time to me, you were doing what? Disney and Disney creators do down there, which is taking care of people that never get a chance to talk to you and never get a chance to do. And, and that's one of the things I've always loved about how you've done about your business. You know, okay, that make, okay. Cause so that, first of all, just to be completely honest, it makes my day more than the people. I mean, come on, somebody's coming up to you saying, we enjoy something you do. Right. You are relevant to our lives. You have a kid that just thinks you're awesome. A, a, a dad or a mom that also watches you or something. And mm -hmm. it's just this overwhelming feeling where it's great. So what I usually like to do is people will, will say like, oh my God, Panda, you're here. You know, like they, they see you on the YouTube. So they think to them, you know, you're something else. Right. And then I'll say, come on, let's do it. They'll say that my friend at home will be so jealous. I'm like, good, let's make a video. So I always try to make vi little videos with them. I just think it stands out better, but Love it's it. really, you know, if they're getting something out of it, great, because I am. It's I really nice for me people say can we take a picture like if you didn't ask me to take a picture i'd be sad you'd be sad we're going to talk with john about his uh the new thing that he has going which is over on his channel and going lives now consistent of tuesday in a few minutes but i want everybody to know as you're watching now live or if you're watching the replay and listening to this along uh monora molly is dropping the links all night long uh in there so go over there check out all of the information for panda all his social media all that is in there keep an eye on the chat throughout the night also, in the body and description of this video are all the links that I have for Panda as well. So you can get to anything Big Fat Panda through the chat or through the uh, my inside the description of this video. John, let me ask you, 100000 okay? Oh, we all aspire to get there. I ain't going to lie. I, I'd love to get there at some point, be able to say that I've accomplished some type of major milestone. Tell me about how that felt when you... Okay, so I don't know if you remember. For me, oh, I remember. it was like... It was a slow growth, you know, it was nice. And then I had a bump somewhere around Frozen and Frozen 2. I was getting really big bumps. I would get a thousand subscribers a day. And then I got to 99,000 after a couple of, maybe five years, six yeah. years. And it like stopped. I, you know, again, I wasn't producing as much. I definitely know I mistreated it. Right. Where I would lose 30, gain 40, lose right. 40, gain 30. And it was, it stood at 99,000 for about two years. Then I started to produce a little bit more again. And when it finally went over that hundred thousand, I was like, my God. And I, and I started to worry how far over do I have to get for it to be secure? To like be you don't want to tell anybody, you know, you're pregnant when you're two weeks pregnant. So you want to wait a month or so. So yeah. I had a hundred thousand. Like, Let me wait a little bit till it's 101,000. Cause maybe a whole bunch of mass exes people are like, I'm not going to give Pam that. But the feeling thousand. had to be good to know. It was great. I cried. I cried when I got that plaque. Uh, I'm sorry. So I'm, Back no, over, no, over your shoulder. Yeah. The other way. There you go. I can't, I can't do backwards. There you go. It was, I cried, I cried when I opened up just because I remember thinking of how unattainable it was 10 years ago. Right. So it was really nice just to see. And I'm surprised how quick they sent it. Usually it would take a while. I think I had it within a week of hitting a hundred. Yeah, they're, they're on it. They're on it. You yeah. know, and the, here, so here's the funny thing about it. I know, you know, you got uh welcome into uh, Joey D also VPs coming in to say, hello. Joey. 
You know, uh, love the Roosevelts, John. That's one of my favorites. Uh, I just, I just, I just bought. I guess I have four Roosevelts now. I got two for the birthday, and I bought two. So I'll be, I'll be having them when I'm coming down. Uh, they're pretty cool. You'll go broke if you have more than four. Well, that's all I need. I, I'm good. And tomorrow, that. tomorrow, haunted mansion comes out. I know. I, I, I was texting with Nate the other day about it. It's a good looking. It's a good looking looking shirt so but here's one thing that you don't know so you got your last push i know uh and we'll we'll talk about the disc thing in, in a few minutes but you got a push guys over there gave you a little bit of push which was great what you don't know is that uh i had reached out to josh from resort tv one and it was the same weekend that that had happened and i said hey buddy i know you you know josh you don't usually do that but you guys are strong he's so close and i know how josh respects you uh, and Jenna both, Josh and Jenna both respect you. I love them. They are great people. They love you to death. Uh, I'd actually reached out to him and said, hey, can you, we try to get a push for Panda? And, and I'm pretty sure he was going to do it, but then you had Maybe your Maybe he did. He, and oh, he might, okay. He, you know, he might he, have. It's, it's possible. He might have. You know, there's a lot of people that love you in this community uh, and, and wanted to see you get there. And I know we're all as proud and excited that you have that. And uh, thank you. you know, don't stop. Keep going is, is the key. There. I'm trying. We're trying. We get I think we're almost at a 102. So it's it takes time, but it's it, getting there. It, it'll get there. So let's let's talk about this. What you are doing now with the, the Tuesday night show. This, let's, let's talk about that for a second. OK, let's let me start at the beginning. When I left the Diz, okay. um, I didn't really want to leave. I mean, I, I there was, you know, problems. Nothing bad happened to me. Uh, seriously, maybe mental, but nothing bad. Seriously. Right. Uh, I was in a dark place, though. I really yeah. was. I was in a depressed state mm -hmm. because in order to make money, which I really wanted and needed to, you know, I have to fix a roof on a house, uh, which everything is, you know, when you buy, I don't know if you know, when you buy a new house, which I did, and then 15 years goes by, everything breaks the same time. Literally, the fridge, the everything goes at the same time. The roof, the windows, it just seems like all of a sudden I'm you blaming need to buy cats, a new house. Just so you know, I'm blaming the cats. <laughs> <laughs> they are responsible for some damage, <laughs> that's for sure. And I got one big one that poops like a human. It scares the hell out of me. <laughs> so the, uh, you know, I, 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 I was talking to Gene and Gene explained to me that he had just started this Disney underground Gene Fitzmagic, mm -hmm. who I call Gene Maney. I don't know how you guys know him. He has about 17 different names and yeah. personas and two different but, beards uh, and two different beards. Yeah. So, and uh, his brother, Patty's awesome. Thank you, Patty bottles. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And I, and he was telling me about, it. I'm like, you know, because I had let my channel slide and, and I didn't do a lot for it. I was putting out a video a month maybe. Mm -hmm. And then there was times where two months went by. I was letting it go and I should not have. And I said, you know, I want to bring that back. I want to do my stuff again. I want to be the creative force again. So when Gene told me he had this show and he, he, was, he wasn't so happy with it. And I had seen Sammy, Sammy D and Fantastic. Morgan Stark. I had just met her, which was also weird, by the way. I did not know Morgan until like two weeks before we started the show. And we hadn't even talked about the show before. So... Everything worked out in a very strange destiny right. way. But Gene, Gene looked at me like, you know, Panda, this guy, this this Panda guy, oh my God. Where I really wasn't that at the time when he was talking to me. I was scared and I didn't know what to do. And I'm like, you know what? If we took the show to our, to my channel and made it ours, I hate when people say, oh, it's Panda's show. It is not. I am absolutely one fourth of that show. Mm -hmm. And it may be even less because of the mods that help out so much. But when I heard that, I was like, you know what? I took a chance and I really did take a chance with Gene and it worked out so wonderfully that it's me, Gene, who does a little bit of the control from it, which I love because I, I get to make other videos and have a clear head during the week. Gene and Patty do a lot of the production backstage. Then you got Sammy D and Morgan Stark. They are just uh, the, the chef's kiss oh. twice. It's it's amazing. So yeah, I feel when like I feel can, into uh, a very lucky. When situation. you can sit there with with your knowledge and your background, and your you know you know you've put your time in and earned your respect for the stripes that you got, like many others out there, you know you know um, as that have done that. When you can sit there with people that can hold themselves on camera, like Sammy D can, like Morgan can, you know Gene can when his signal works and he's you know uh, going good there you really have an opportunity for something that can come together special. And I really think yeah. in, the, in the unique weeks, it, it really has as you come together. It's so new and I still enjoy, and I'm enjoying it so much and I see the people enjoy it. I think it's a really good formula and I'm so happy and I feel very lucky that I kind of fell into it. So 
I love it. I love it. Uh, I also want to real quick before we go out, I want to make sure that I also remind because I it's an important thing for me. This coming Sunday is a big show. It's Kenneth H on the Clubhouse Chaotic Chat. Kenneth H coming to sit down with the ladies uh, there. Uh, that is going to be a fantastic show. That is Angela Minter, Stephanie Keel, and Monorail Molly. That's a great transition, uh, John. But the importance of the people, the importance of the people. I know you and I talked about a little bit before the show. You know, you have people here like Mary T. Wells. Mary is one of many people that I have known for years that support you and follow you and give you un uh, just a – it's not – worship's the wrong word. I would say a love – uh, from a fan to a creator, but it's more than that because of the it's more than that. I have three a.m. conversations with Mary. Yes, well, <laughs> it's a good thing to do. Talk a little bit about the importance of that with your community. When you when you okay, you take it for granted for sure. I know I absolutely do until you realize you need it when you're in your dark place, mm -hmm. which people don't think I ever get. You know, into a bad place. I'm not there now. That's for right. sure. But I was six months ago that those relationships are everything when you get up at three in the morning and you're you know the demons are talking to you telling you you're worthless you know people like mary will just it, confirm it for you that you're mm -hmm. worthless no i'm just kidding so but no, no i stuff people like mary marla i don't know if marla is in here mary stuff people like that just uh i connect good with linda it's, raymond it's a good it's a it's a beautiful thing let's let's talk disney and and you know where where it was when you started in this whole social media aspect. I mean, back then it was small. The YouTube thing was kind of like, uh, who's doing, who's doing what? It was more of the, the, the people doing all the media, the web people doing all that, yep. you know, you know, and I, and I say this with respect and I know you're a humble person, but you're going to have to deal with it tonight. When, when I look at this social media aspect and I think of, you know, if we had like a Mount Rushmore with four, six, eight type of person uh -huh. on there, you're on, you, you know, trackers on there and you're on there and, you know, Justin Scard is on there. Some of these people that have been doing their websites for a while. I mean, we got so many good ones, and you know, not to disrespect, you know, you got you got Mickey Blog, you got you know, uh, we deal with Chip and Co. You got um, you know Michelle Atwood. Her her thing with everything she does is absolutely stellar. You you know, you've got Greg's out there now doing his own thing and trying to to make his way. You've got other people out there that have been doing it for a while in their own unique styles and the way to bring it. My God, Molly with Mammoth Club is just, she just blew things up and showed, you know, what it is. How much has it changed for you from the start to kind of where it is now? I mean, it's, it's kind of a totally different animal with the blow up of social media. Yeah, I remember when I started, like people were like, my God, you have the clearest videos in the world because I just had a decent video camera. Right. Now, everybody's got the $3,000 Sony camera yeah. and we're all working at low light and, you know. So, yeah, it's definitely become more competitive in the, you know, the quality of what you're delivering, which I think is good for everybody because the quality is going to be better mm -hmm. all around for videos and stuff like that. Um, I still see a lot of people just running around and not like... The camera's got to stay still for a minute, let people focus on something that they're looking at. So even though there's a lot, I think there's still, you can pick your handful of really good people who know, who respect, and I guess, not respect, but they 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 want the quality of what they're putting across on the screen to come to the viewer. Some of them don't, some of them do. The uh, the I would say the aspect of how much social media there is now. You know, it used to be one or oh. two things, and now there's like, Facebook and Twitter, and now it's, it's Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Telegram, Threads. Phone. It's you know, it's it's every somebody's somebody's out front sending up smoke signals to people, so they it's it's crazy, and it's such a a competitive avenue with all of it. Uh, I, the challenge that I see is it's kind of it's kind of funny to me, uh, but it's part of what it is when something new happens and these media events happen, the rush to get everything out there. Because there is so many, I think is a big avenue. It wasn't like that before. I never, I never actually really rushed to get stuff out. I would always go home and edit it, and th and hopefully hope that the quality would be better than the quickness. Right. So you know, I wouldn't film stuff on my cell phone, even though the cell phones have come a long way now. I would film it on the video camera, go home and edit, where people would be uploading it in the park that second, and yeah, they would get the first views because it was you know, 10 minutes after the thing happened, right. where mine would be six hours after. And that sometimes it didn't matter. 
Like I did a test a couple of times uh, mm -hmm. and it's not Disney. It was Halloween Horror Nights and it was Chucky. And Attractions Magazine had made almost word for word the same video I made because they filmed Chucky at the same time I did. Right. My thumbnail was a close-up of Chucky. I remember. They, theirs, came out, theirs came out earlier and they were racking up the views. Mine came out with a better thumbnail and past theirs. And I was like, okay. And again, same video. I'm not saying I did anything better than them. Right. It was just, yeah. Mine went on to two, three million views, I think. And theirs went on to, you know, 20, 30, 40,000. Right. And it was, and I wasn't the first one. So I then took a step back and said, okay, you don't have to be first. Have a good thumbnail and have the content look, you know, be what the thumbnail says it is. You know, have audience right. retention when they click. Funny, funny you say that after the conversation we had before the show started about thumbnails. Right, right. Exactly. It's true. Like, it's very you, true. Do you think that, you know, from your time in and your experience that the amount of creators that we have now is uh, is um, more troublesome for the parks, for the guests? You know, is it something that could hurt later on where, where Disney and Universal or some of the other ones say, hey, okay, we're going to give out these Disney media passes, they're the only people that can have it and that's it. And they're the only people that are going to be doing it. Do you think that's a possibility? Well, I think, first of all, I think it's unsustainable that people can watch everybody. Unless you're Mary Wells, you can't watch everybody. But yeah, okay, with the parks, here's what I see. When I see some live streamers killing the attraction, if you're on the Haunted Mansion and you're going around Madame Leota, oh, you okay. shut up. I know. We're now going around Madame Leota. And it's like, <laughs> You know, Disney has to do, somebody has to do something. I'll yell, you know, shut up. But uh, that stuff has to stop. I think it has to be, you know, you have to respect that people are there still on vacation. You can't, you know, you can't uh, ruin their experience. Yeah. And and you, and just because you think your face is so great, you don't have to talk. On, on, people will respect that you're shutting up for the show, that you're, you know, being a little quiet at a, at a dinner table around people. I think that seems to lend to be more to the newer people. And it's not being disrespectful. It's, you know, everybody was green at some point as they did this. And, and I think it, it could be just ignorance. Yes. It's different. ignorance sometimes. Yeah. Cause you, and you look at some of the people from the time when, you know, kind of, I look at the people that kind of came in right behind you that are now finding the success that you're doing the Jackies, you know, with super enthused Nate, you know, that, you know, what they're doing, the people that have come in the level behind you. And they're putting in the time. They kind of followed the path that you laid out, that Tim laid out, that Justin laid out, you know, and then they've copied it. And now people are coming behind them with the resort TV ones and the theme park Steve's out in California that are taking off. I mean, Chris Provost, my God, followed, followed, took, he took the, the, the playbook that you guys laid out and just ran with it. It's got to give you a sense of pride when you know you were one of the guys that kind of started this to see the people come behind you that treated you with respect and are now yes. kind of friends that are friends with you to see them have that level of success. Yes. And especially when you know, it's genuine. Like I always thought, and, and that is true. I just saw super enthused. You know, I never met her till the other day. Really? Just, I just saw her at universal. And it was like, I knew her forever. Very nice lady. Uh, the, if it's genuine, I think when somebody starts this to make money or to be popular, I don't think it lasts. I think they have to do it because they really enjoy the parks. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you'll get burnt out if you don't really enjoy being in the parks, especially when it's a hundred degrees out. So, yeah, but yes, it does. I, I like seeing some of the people. Yeah. I'm not all of them. I'm saying you know, most of them. I do like most of them. That's the key. Most, most of them, you know, cause every, everybody has their bumps that they run into. We, we, we know how that goes. As you think about, you know, Disney and where it's going, as you think about Disney and where it's going, you know, five years ago, we didn't think about Disney plus. We didn't think about this whole thing being, being covered the way it is. We weren't thinking at that time about, you know, park reservations and all this stuff. Okay. So it's changed unless where do you see a Disney in the next five years? Where do you, where's it going? I'm, I'm really hoping that it takes a back, uh, a reverse and becomes a little simpler. Yeah. I think, I, I just think for the average family, who's not as, you know, Disney fied as us learning everything. Imagine just all of a sudden picking up a book to plan a Walt Disney World vacation and being like, oh, I have to make, you know, there's so much that's changed. And I, I always joked around that I was going to make a video like going to Publix, and yeah. which is our grocery store out here. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, just pick your big grocery store. And imagine you get there and they go, okay, yeah, I'm going in. And somebody's at the front go, what do you mean you're going in? What do you, I'm going grocery shopping. Do you have a reservation for today? What? Okay, that's different. All right, no, I'm just going to go in and get some milk. Oh, milk? 
That's different. You're going to need a lightning lane to get milk. And the virtual queue, mm, you missed it. Sorry, you can't get milk today. Like, there's so much that's changed. We right. used to just go and enjoy the park. Now, I don't like that you have to be a little bit more on your phone. I'm hoping they break the chains a little bit. And it seems to be going that way, like with the reservation center now, at least yeah. after two o'clock, you yeah. know, if you have an annual pass, well, you can go. I'm hoping that they break that down and make it more spontaneous. Huh? Obviously, we know it's a juggernaut of, of, you know, cash cow in some things with things that they do. Uh, they're in business to be in business. Walt and, uh, and, and Roy got into business to make business, uh, make money. Do you think now that the world that we're in with Disney is much more financially focused than it is uh, about the, the guest, about the event, about the, the, the memories? I think it seems that way. Okay. But it can't be because the money follows exactly what you just said. Meaning Disney is smart enough to know mm -hmm. that guest satisfaction makes the money. It really does. And when, you know, you could slip for a little while maybe and get by, but not for too long. They know that. So I think they have to get back to, I can't wait to see what D23 announcements they make. And if this $17 billion investment stuff goes through, because they're going to have to answer to epic universe and other things right <clears throat> so the disney does know they they've been trained that the money does not follow until there's guest satisfaction so i think you can screw somebody over once maybe twice but after that the people stop coming and they i think they got to get to the actuality that. and not so much blue sky for this upcoming d23 i think that's that's a key factor yeah we don't need any more we don't want to know what's what's going in now and you got to start building because we know how long that takes yeah, and and now with the writer strike we got going, I mean you're you're seeing stuff get get pushed back. You know, I keep telling everybody take in what you got now because it may be a little bit I think, right. Like like in a year from now we're going to get a lull, right? We ha it has to. it has to. <laughs> it has to with which is that's the time you really dig back into all the old stuff that's on D23 and go back and either refresh your memory of something you watched or you know watch something you haven't seen before where you can get into that, which I think can, can be interesting. One of the things that I miss that's over there, that's not over there that I hope comes back. And I haven't seen, I know there was talk about it is our, uh, our main street performers like, like over in Hollywood studios, you know, some of these uh, we're missing that. Right. I mean, what's your thoughts there? It's, it feels like the veins are empty. It, they need blood. And when the sh citizens of Hollywood and the, you know, even if you had two people on main street, the sheriff and one of the suffragettes, mm -hmm. uh, it brought life to it. And you know what's funny is you the, the kids remember the, the Haunted Mansion. They remember the rides. But they most families remember the interactions with, I know like me, citizens of Hollywood right. and Main Street. I remember those interactions more than the attractions. 100% uh, for sure. 100% for sure. My guest tonight is Big Fat Panda Guys. He's a, you know, to me, is one of the, the guys that started it all as we started to think about the whole social media build up to where it is today. Can be found on all the social media fronts. He's got a really, really good uh, Facebook group that I am proud to be a part of and blessed to be allowed to to post over there. Quality content will be found over there. Family friendly for all you love. We're dropping all the links for all his social media throughout. Thank you. Here's Tuesday night, this coming Tuesday. Let's talk about this for a minute. Back to it. You've got a big interview coming up, and I'm excited about this because of what you're doing with it. You're going to be interviewing uh, a guest who's going to come on and talk about not only his success as a creator and his love of Disney. He's also uh, he is the epitome to me of how to be a father because I've watched him as a dad and I respect him immensely. Great. But he's also got a huge charity event. Talk about Tuesday's show you have coming up. Yeah, Corey Meets World is coming on the show. And it's funny, we don't really have, I mean, we've the show is new, what we're doing. Right. So having a guest with four of us, we have a format, Patty and Gene figured it out pretty good. Uh, we, you know, we haven't done it, but we can't wait to do it, especially with Corey. It'll probably be more like this and less interviewee since we know Corey so well. But yeah. him, like Resort TV, is one of the great live streamers. Corey does so much good, genuine work with Give Kids the World. Good man. Uh, I think it was, I forgot when it was that I had done it with him i was out of it last year but he's coming back i think it's december is it ninth i want to say the 9th. sixth but then he he corrected me yeah okay it's the Got ninth it. so he'll talk more about that but he he puts on a great a great show what was we was it uh night of hope night of hope the name incredibly talented of hope. with you know you had josh over there playing on the saxophone you had neil of Alyssa neil on the trombone they um they had uh nate reading christmas stories 
Donna's heavily involved with a lot of the give outs and stuff. Donna Jaworski. It's it's an amazing group of people. Steve from Steve Steve's World does a great job working behind the scenes and facilitating. And you guys will hear a lot more. Right. I need you guys to be over on Panda Show Tuesday night, uh, 8 o'clock, and listening in, checking in, and hearing all about it. Uh, and if you don't know Corey, you'll know a little bit more about him that night. I think, Such a I think fun, nice I'm, having a, I'm having a better hair day than Corey today. I just like to point that out. You know? Make sure you let him know that. <laughs> he's got that. He's got that nice flip up. Oh, he, See, he, the, 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 the time ahead. that we did it before was at Donna's house. Let me right. tell you, you want to eat well, you go visit Donna's house. <clears throat> oh, yeah, absolutely. I've been told by I'm press, not stupid. Well, we're down there in a couple of weeks, which, you know, you and I talked about. And uh, Preston actually told me, apparently, I don't, I didn't know about it, but apparently we are going to Donna's on Sunday for something. I didn't know about this. Uh, I was just informed, Dad, uh, you need to adjust your Sunday schedule because this is where we're going. I'm like, okay, so uh, I'll find that out, I guess, <laughs> when we get okay. over there. So I'm going to talk to Donna. You might see me. I go. I will invite myself to her house as long as she's cooking something real fast. Uh, it's it's amazing. She's again, you know, salt of the earth as far as her charity aspect. She's another one doing a ton of charity uh, to support. And I th let's talk about that for a second. The charity in this community. That's a good, great segue that we got. You know, we got people like we yeah. talked about Corey down. Resort TV One has raised a ton of money over time. Uh, my partner in crime over here, Dad Builds, is he raised five thousand dollars last year for the Stroke Association. He's already raised another twenty five hundred this year that he's doing. The charity, the, the the heart in this community, you've seen it for a while. It, oh yeah, and Give Kids the World is re it's, it's such a, you know, sometimes you give to charities and you don't know what happens to the money. I, you could see firsthand Give Kids the World really does the right thing. As a matter of fact, somebody I forgot who told me that one of their CEOs was on a plane sitting in coach, and they asked them, you know, why don't why aren't you in first class? They're like, I wouldn't use the villa. I, I'm supposed to be in first class, but I wouldn't spend the villa the village's money in first class. That's so right. these people think that way even when nobody's watching, and that's, that's really a, nice. that's a beautiful thing. I've watched um, where they had the people going over the side of the building. Mark Daniel, good friend of both of ours. Uh, I watched Mark go over it. Uh, and I texted oh. him afterwards, and he was like, I thought I was going to die. But it was worth every penny for raising money for the kids. You know. Do you know what really scared me? And I hate, I don't want to bring the show down. Remember the, the flyer incident uh -huh. with the, uh, the flyer over in 360? Flyer. They were doing a Give Kids the World event over there. Right. I almost went to that and would never have gotten on that ride. But for Give Kids the World, I'd have done it. Now, I don't know if you remember, the person that got hurt first, was a big guy, hurt. and it was because it didn't work. I I'm I was scared now thinking I would have absolutely done it because it was for give kids the world and not question the safety at all. So yeah. it's, it's just scary. That thing. And I'm Lord looked out for people, John. That's key. You know, one thing I kind of would like to talk about is something that, that a lot of people, I think that people are afraid to ask, but I'm not afraid to ask when, when we sit down, especially because of our, our friendships. Talk to me about what it means. Cause I know what it means to me, but I'd like to hear from you as being a veteran who's been here for so long. When you build these relationships, and a lot of them start when people are just people, you know, and you get to know people, you build it up. And you get to know, and then they grow, and they have success and do things, you know. The relationships that you have with these people, and you see the success and everything, talk about how much that means to you to see the people that you started knowing, you know, when they were just people, to now they're, you know, they're somebody that people go, oh, God, oh, they're so-and-so. I got to go say hello. Well, or I need listen. To PC, PC Dev is one. Yeah. I remember seeing PC Dev and he was like, you know, I think he was just starting out and nicest guy, you know, really excited to see me. I didn't know who he was. And now I look at him and he's like freaking killing it. Yeah. Uh, my friend Corinne, Disney Lifestylers Disney on Instagram. Life, yeah, they, I just remember she, she posted a couple of merch videos and things like that. Now I look at her Instagram. She's like the Instagram queen. And it's yeah. just like, wow. And, you know, I will say 80% <clears> of the friendships stay for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a couple of them where you realize, oh, they're they're batshit nuts, and oh, <coughs> I should listen to that. Sorry, <laughs> well, that, okay, that bleep, crazy, bleep. Sorry, <laughs> that crazy. <laughs> and uh, but most of them are, are just really good. But yeah, it is. You know, you don't realize it because it happens slow. Like it's not like all of a sudden you wake up and you go, oh wow, I'm proud of that person. It just happens so slowly, and you know, you're morphing and changing and evolving as they are. So you don't quite notice it until you mention it now. And I look back and go, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think for, for me with, with it, you know, I was see how here. Mary Wells is yelling at me, by the way. Yeah. I, uh, well, I, I have to, I, I John was, with, with exclamations. It's yes. A, well, I usually get, uh, when I do something wrong, I usually get my, uh, full name 
all the way through middle initial middle name and everything yeah i have i have that too so i'm i'm, I'm right now i'm good because i'm not getting that i you know i had that that moment for me too when i you know was sitting there thinking about that last year during d23 you know well um you know mark who was up on stage with ashley Eckstein and them in between takes he's texted me at the house here and i'm thinking okay well this is pretty cool of, of where it comes he is so, mark daniel pff. He just not just funny and talented, but just the nicest guy. And his and his wife too. She is amazing. Oh, um, Barbara! I'm in love with Barbara. Barbara oh Daniels. God, she's fantastic. Amazing. Yeah, there. Here I'm getting. There's there's mine. Molly's giving me mine with the, the whole full thing. I haven't even done anything yet, so um, I guess that's a preempt everything. As you uh, as you go with this, and you're thinking about you know the future for you. Where do you where do you want to take this? Is 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 it a is it a full panda television channel? I mean, you're let's be honest, you're yeah. on the news down there all the time. You know, it's, if I could just make a moderate living doing what I enjoy, I'm good with that. I don't need like to be, you know, the top, and I don't need to be the. If it happens, great. If Disney calls me to be the voice of a cartoon, that's my dream. But apart from that, I if I can keep the if we can grow the Tuesday show, which I really hope the Disney Underground. Uh, which I give Gene, you know, I give him such such a hard time for it. He calls us the experimental prototype. What's experimental, Gene? Why are we the underground? Do we live under the Pinocchio Village house? What's going on with this brick wall? But it's fun. But I hope to grow that show and show people that you can have a popular show, interact with the audience. I hate when people ignore their mm -hmm. chat room, and it happens a lot. And mm -hmm. I know that if it gets very busy, it's hard to, you can't give everybody attention, I get it. But we do take their suggestions, we do listen to them, and we do play off of that, and sometimes alter the show midstream based on what they say. Well, I like and how, if, I like how you, you bring that up, but I, I'm gonna highlight you for something you do. Now me, I, you know, you see, I put my constant chat is coming up here, so everybody can see their part of it. I love how you, during your stream, I'll see you, reach out to somebody in the chat and say something. You'll be in mid mid thing and, and boom, it'll come up there. And I think that's a, again, it's showing people through your actions of how to broadcast and how to do it. Thank you. And it's a balance because you can't, you know, there's a conversation going on. So you don't want to kill the conversation, but you want to say thank you to somebody. So I'm glad you think it's okay the way I try to I juggle it. I think it's great. Thank I think you. we always got to find a way. I'm going to give you a quick break for a second. I'm going to highlight a couple community things. We're going to talk about John in the community things, but I don't know if you know this or not, but I have, uh, when I do my race for 100K, I now have what's called a, a VIP section. And we talk about you in there every time we show your logo. We tell Thank everybody you. to check you out every time. Uh, while we're sitting here, guys, the, uh, I will have my moderators please drop all of Panda's links in. I'm going to hit this community segment real quick. When we come back, I want to talk to you about uh, something I'm probably going to catch you a little bit off guard with, which is the last time you and I saw each other. You remember where that was? Magic Kingdom. It was Magic Kingdom. It was Magic and didn't Kingdom. Dan come and visit also, Dan Wynn? Dan, I think Dan might have beat me there too at that night. He wasn't with me that night. I think you you saw him. But okay. We're going to talk about that night because that was actually my return to Disney after this yes. three year thing. And I'd like to share with everybody a little bit about that story. Uh, and I also want to talk to you a little bit about more about uh, Disney and, and the resorts. I want to talk to you, you know, you're very knowledgeable about the resorts. Disney's doing some building down there. I want to talk with you a little bit about that and more on the show. We got about 10 minutes left. Uh, quick three minutes here as we acknowledge a couple of things. We'll be right back with the Big Fat Panda in just a minute. Magical Moments, People in the Park, brought to you by the Disney Baker. Everybody, this is where I highlight some great pictures of people in the park. Wes! Wes from Busy Getting Disney was hanging out down there with the Sorcerer and Apprentice. Uh, there's our good friends from the Nerd Herders. They were down there in the park saying hello. Diz our dream, hanging out with Goofy. One of these uh, individuals on the screen is Goofy, ridiculous, says ridiculous things, acts crazy, and the other is a Disney character, everybody. It's a good time right there. Uh, there's Speaking of super enthused. Uh, there they are hanging out down there. Great picture in front of Epcot, her and Sam. Uh, Diz Our Dream had a great hangout one night down there recently. I think it was, was the M80. So many great friends. Baker's in there. Jennifer Caruso, do Philly to everybody. A lot of good friends hanging out in that one. Speaking of Jennifer Caruso, she was over at one of the DVC nights. Sent me this picture. Thought it was really good. And, uh, and there is our good friend, that crazy Disney lady. This was Cookie's birthday. We're going to be talking about Tanya on Friday and celebrating her hitting 30 thousand subscribers really proud of them congratulations this week this is where casey's corner of the world and i recognize uh creators for what they do and having success on their channels 
This is what we do here all the time. Uh, we thank Casey's Corner World for doing it. Dad builds at 100,000 views. Congratulations. Jennifer Caruso, 200,000 views. Uh, one, one million views. Uh, that is Susan Silva. We love her. Uh, Myers and the Mouse hit 2 million channel views. These are successes, successes. We love it. Uh, 2 million views over there at Theme Park Vaza. Views and subscribers are cool. 5 million views to Tanya, that crazy Disney lady. Some subscriber goals. Brian and I, Ed, Mickey Travels, and Life with Roxana all hit 1,000 subscribers. Our Castle Life hit 2K. Uh, our good friend Rob Fuzz hit 6,000. Uh, you got Becca Hart hit 15K. Congratulations, Becca. The Crystal Palace went over 25,000. Awesome. Ear to Ear Magic, 25,000 as well. Document Disney at 30K. 30K. 40K. Ear Scouts. Ear Scouts hitting up the number. The Pew 2, who has really been growing lately, 50,000 on theirs. 60,000 on Inside Disney. The numbers just keep growing. The community is growing. 60,000 on Adventure is out there as well. Real quick, the race to 100K. I want to shoot through it real quick. We highlight this every week. If you don't know about it, it's brought to Hello, everyone. It's Chris with Disney Dynamics. We bring you tons of Disney content with a little bit of humor. My mom thinks I'm funny anyways. 4K unboxings of Disney merch and promo codes to save you money. We bring you live to Disney parks. And then after the sun goes down, we head to Disney After Dark, where we mix Disney-inspired drinks and have slightly inappropriate conversations with our Disney friends. If that sounds good to you, you're just the right amount of weird to fit right in. That's Disney Dynamics, spelt with a K for some reason. All right, the race this week. These are your top numbers. We'll update it again on Friday. This was as of last week. Disney Dave out of the UK. Emily Enchanted out of Cali. Ava Loves Disney. Mr. Cheesy Pop in the mix. Theme Park Obsession and Park Ride History are your top players right there. 79,000 down to the 50 range. Uh, you got some good creators in there from all over the UK, United States, and California. Loving that. 52,000 down to 39. Some fireworks for Ear Scouts and Sam's Disney Diary who are passing over people. If you see fireworks, they've passed over people. Pew 2, Rope Drop in there, and Ear Some Emporium. 38,000 down to the 20 range. Diz Life of Ours and Becky plus Eli out of Cali. They got the fireworks this week. Uh, and, of course, like I said, we'll be updating Tanya. She just hit that number uh, yesterday, which is pretty good. Crystal Palace at 25K with fireworks down to 18,000. Lou Mangiello, our good friend in there. LBV Disney, Ear to Ear Magic, Disney Goofball, some great channels in here. Again, we are not asking you to subscribe to any of these channels. All I'm trying to do is to give you an idea who's out there. In case you're looking for more content, you might find somebody good that meets your viewing palette. Do not go to somebody and just subscribe. Check out their content. Hit the button because you like their content. Drew in the moment over here. Attractions Live. WDW Prep. Vince and Vision. Some great channels in there. Mouse Talk, our partner channel from 15 all the way down to Main Street. Chip and Co. in the mix there. One little spark. Becca Hart with some fireworks. Mouse Vibes out of Cali. Some great channels in there on the run. 12,000 down to nine. Again, we'll update this this week. Sable Family actually just went over 10K, everybody. Myers and the Mouse, our partner in 10K. Diz Our Dream at 12, Living in Diz. These are some great quality content creators. Eight, nine, down to seven, seven. Steve of the World at the base there. Adventures by Carney in there, making magical adventures, magically consumed. Again, I love this because Florida, California, UK, all covered in it. And our last box for the night, 7-7 seven, seven down to 4-9. Donna Jaworski right there creating from home. Some newer creators in here that are in the mix. you got to have at least 3,500 for me to even consider putting you in the race. And you got to be moving. These are some great people. And we talked about the Disney Elite. The Disney Elite. There it is. JoJo up at that 1.3 million. All the way down to Big Fat Panda right there. Again, look at these people. They've been around for a while. And why do I put them in here? While they might have a ton of creators, guess what? They don't have everybody. And we don't want anybody forgotten. So check out all of these channels. They do a fantastic job. They've earned their stripes to get to that number. And uh, you might find somebody new that you've never seen before that you say, hey, these people are really good. John, when we met that time, so I was coming back to the parks. It was my uh, first time in uh, two and a half years, and I had been through, actually almost three years, I had been through my medical tragedy and everything. And uh, we had talked about, hey, I'm going to try to catch, going to try to catch up. And what I want to tell everybody is, uh, when I talk about good people with John, and I'll give you a chance to reply here at the end, uh, when I talk about good people on my channel, good people in this community, building upon good people, why you want to help others. 
So you knew what my situation was. You knew I was in rough shape. You knew I was. it was tough for me to get around there. At that time, I was still badly in a wheelchair and bandaged up and really couldn't do much. And uh, you were, at that time, working for the Diz, and you were trying to get all the stuff for the Christmas party. It was a Christmas party we were at. And you were in the center of the hub there, you know, and I, I was that. sitting over, I was sitting over about, I don't know, about 20 yards away or so. And I saw you over there and um, I was yelling to you, but I, I, it was so loud because the music was going and, and you were focused on, you had your tripod there and you're running all over and doing all kinds of stuff. And I said to somebody who was with us, and I don't remember who it was, but I said, you know, there's Panda. I wanted to say hi to him. And when they went over and told you that I was there, you literally stopped. Everything I do remember that. That I stopped everything. It was so it was so important to me, honestly. And it wasn't because over. I was trying to make you feel I, I felt like this was a big step for you and I had to address it. I just want you to know how much it meant to me because I've always respected Aww, you, thank you in what you do and everything. And for the fact for you to stop that and to do that, um, it, it gave me more empowerment to again want to go out and do more of what I'm doing. So I, I just wanted to acknowledge yeah. Say thank you for that, and that, and I know I, I knew it was a big, a big day for you, and that wasn't going to go un, unknown. Well, I appreciate that. Let's uh, let's talk for a second about uh, as we come into the train here. I want to talk again real quick about your show, but I want to talk about Disney and it's all of its, uh, you know, so many places to say, so many different locations down there and where they're growing. You've seen it change over your time there, you know, where it's going. You see the new building going up there over by the Grand Floridian and everything. Some people are happy, some aren't. Are you happy with where Disney's going? Do you think they're on the right path? Are you, are you, you have some reservations? What's your thoughts with all that? The You know, it's, it's funny. A lot of times I am the one that agrees with stuff that Disney does and I can defend it. With the Poly, I, right now that tower is not good for me. Right. I need them to really Hawaiian up that tower for it to really look like it belongs. And yeah. I hope they do that. Based on the concept art I saw, I'm not too hopeful. Okay. But then I go to a place like the Riviera, which is kind of new, and I think it's fantastic. Between the restaurant, the gondola, the whole thing. I actually bought DVC in the Riviera, and I'm not a rich person. It's, it's a big nut to crack, but for me, hey, it was worth it. Let me ask you real quick before I talk about your show real quick, before we get ready to tie things up. Your perfect day in Disney, if your perfect location to stay, place to eat for dinner, you know, location park to go, what would it be for you? You know, it's different. It changes based on where you're going. A, per a perfect night could be going to the Magic Kingdom, Mary Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, and then going to the Grand Floridian for the night, getting up and eating breakfast at the Grand Floridian Cafe and going home. And that would be a perfect day. But if it's, you know, if you want to go to the Jollywood nights coming up, a night at the Riviera. So it, I've had a few, I've had perfect days at Disney, not going to a park. We went to Disney Springs. They pixie dusted us with that car ride in the ocean, the, amphi mm -hmm. the amphiba car, whatever the heck right. it's called. And we had a really nice time. And it was just, you know, sometimes things just fall into place and they work out between the crowds and the rides. Mm -hmm. and then sometimes you go and, you know, Rise of the Resistance isn't working and that makes you mad. But there are still a lot of really good days. And I still find the magic in Disney. I've heard you. Even um, though sometimes they kill me. I've done my research, obviously, as I always do, as you know I do for all my things. And I heard you answer that question on one of the podcasts one time. And I knew if I took you to the trough, you would drink and you would tell everybody. And I can't, you're right. That is the perfect answer of it's that day that could be perfect in one way, shape or form. And then the next day it's perfect in totally different. And I loved that answer that you gave a while back on one of your podcasts. Was, was it the same? I don't even know. Well, yeah, you pretty much went right where I wanted you to go. So, oh, yeah. okay. I didn't think. Yeah. By the way, you, you could be at Epcot when it's raining and it, places get flooded. And mm -hmm. if you just, with reckless abandon, become a kid again, just walk around in the rain with no umbrella and it can be a perfect day. Sure, you might have a cold the next day, but you'll remember. Remember the time we were kicking a foot of water around in front of Test Track? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you still can find it there. And now with food and wine, I wish you were coming for that. You, when are you going to be here for food and wine? Yep. Okay, there's some food we have to go try. We got to go try. You know, sometimes a perfect day can be a candlelight dinner in the hotel room. You know, it just exactly. Can't. So, uh, don't forget, guys, this Tuesday night, John will be back with the Disney Underground with Gene, with the lady, Sammy D. And and uh, first of all, I, I'm so proud of her and how much she has just grown uh, and what you do. You've got a perfect combination over there with the ladies uh, and with Gene and, and what you're doing. Patty Puddles, highlights to him. Doing a great job behind the scenes. Poor Gene kills Patty. You know, Poor Gene. Uh, well, it's Poor Gene. Patty. 
we take Gene with a, a stride. So, And then want to remind everybody again before everybody rolls out this coming Sunday, Kenneth H. will be live right here this coming Sunday night. This coming Sunday night, Kenneth H. going to be here. If you have not seen the ladies broadcast on Sunday night uh, with an all-female-led cast, I'm just the guy sitting there admiring, watching them go. Come over on Sunday night and check it out. Uh, you know you're always welcome here on my show and anything we can do to continue to help you grow and uh, foster. But I wanted to throw it over to you for a final thought of the night before we close things out. I'm going to tell you something very quick that people don't know. Behind the scenes, somebody like Lou Mangello puts up a thing for WDW Clubhouse and says, how can I improve the clubhouse? So I private message him. You know the puppet in the fire? And it says, burn it all down. That's what I sent him. And Lou sends me back, nice, real nice. <laughs> so that things like that go on that you don't know that I think is funny. But yeah, thank you guys so much for everything. I, Gene can't talk enough about you, Pete. So not only do you give me a lot, but apparently you give Gene a lot too that I don't even know about. No. But yeah, we all appreciate you. Thank you so much. And yeah, the team for Disney Underground, I am blessed. It's not just my channel. It is theirs completely. Nice. Go over, uh, check out all of our friends that are going to be live tonight. Uh, Dad Builds will be live a little bit later on tonight with a, a fantastic show. It'll be absolutely awesome. Check them out. Uh, and Tuesday night, you better be over. It's Corey Meets World over on the underground. Good night, everybody. John, hang tight. We'll be right back to talk a little bit about close the video. Let's go. Thanks, Musketeers, for joining the party. We'll be looking for you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Bye, all.